guys and welcome to Nick Grit. In today's video, I'm gonna go over how to make this really cute Luna Squish kitty cat. So um, in this video, I'm not gonna show you how I changed the colors and did all this variation for the, the, the tones, but I am gonna show you the general template. I'm just terrible at changing colors, so I'm just not going to even bother with that. I'm going to be making a completely black uh, kitty cat over here, but I did try my hand at a calico just to see if I could be good at it. I am still garbage at changing colors, so I do not feel like I'm an authority in teaching people how to change colors. As you can see, I still have some issues that I am working out, but I am going to be showing you how I do the main part of the ear, the inner ear, the little mouth region, and the embroidery for the nose, as well as the little cat tail. In this amigurumi, I used Red Heart Soft White. The Heartlink yarn that I'm gonna be using in this video, as well as the pink yarn that I'm gonna be using in this video. And I also used a Heartland yarn in orange. So to do what I am doing, I am going to start off with just a Luna Squish base done all in the Heartland yarn Black Canyon. This is a worsted weight yarn, which is a size four as well as the Red Heart Soft in Rose Blush. I'm using very minimal amount of this though, so you know, keep that in mind. You can use any kind of worsted weight pink for the inner ears or just omit the pink altogether, but I do use the pink for the inner ears and for the nose embroidery. Uh, you can find the Luna Squish pattern and tutorial on how to make this body linked down below. It's on my channel and on my Ravelry. I am doing the head, the legs up to the body and the arms. This will be what I start off with. This is just my little template and I will be adding the ears, the mouth and the tail. So for this, you will need any kind of size four worsted weight or Aran weight even yarn. I'm using again, Black Canyon, which is uh, 153. It is a lion brand yarn. Uh, it is really pretty. I like how heathered and variegated it is. It's really pretty. I'm also using the Red Heart Soft, like I said, in Rose Blush. I will have a thing popping up of all the things that you will need, so if you want to, like, screenshot that, you can. I'm also going to be using a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook by Susan Bates. I really like this hook, but I am going to be experimenting in my next video with this beautiful furls crochet hook if you're interested in this kind of crochet hook again links will be down below i did ask them for an affiliate link and they gave me one so i'm pretty excited about that i will be doing my sloth video with this hook i am enamored but because i did the entirety of this body with this hook i'm going to be consistent which is like my big thing when it comes to any kind of crocheting is being consistent so i will be using this hook for the rest of this pattern, but if you are interested in that, stay tuned because I will be experimenting with this hook very soon. Look at how pretty it is. It's so pretty. I think it's the Odyssey in rose gold, but I'll link all that down below if you're interested in that. I am also bringing out the unicorn scissors, which I finally have them just on my desk. I promise I won't move them again, maybe. <laughs> And I'm also using a darning needle. You will also need some polyester fiber fill to stuff your amigurumi, and you will need 20 millimeter uh, safety eyes. I am using these ones that I got off of Amazon. That is not an affiliate link. So we will be starting out with creating the ears. So I'll be putting a pattern up here. It'll be popping up on the screen at any point in time that you can screenshot. I will also have a printable PDF that for the first week, will be free for people that click on the little coupon code and you can have that for free on my Ravelry and after that it will go right back up to five dollars. So I've been doing that with all my Luna Squishes. I like how it's been turning out so far. A lot of people have been downloading so I'm pretty excited about that. I like being able to do that so um, if you're interested in all the Luna Squishes make sure that you do the whole subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified when I do upload because it is uh, for the first week of any time I do any of my Luna Squishes. From here on out, I'm going to make it for free and I think I'm gonna do that for any of my other um, for sale patterns. So, you know, do the whole bell thing and be notified when there are free patterns to be had if you're interested in that kind of thing. So again, we're gonna start off with the ears. I'm gonna posting up the pattern. I should have already done it by now, but this is actually pretty easy. I like how uh, square this turned out. So for this, we are going to start out with the ears. You're going to want to be comfortable with doing a slip knot as well as single crocheting. 
doing some increasing and decreasing as well as working in the round. Um, if you're not comfortable with those things, there will be a Crochet 101 uh, playlist down below. You can get comfortable that way. But to start off, we are going to do what I call my magical ring method, which I'll have talked about a lot in my Luna Squish uh, base video pattern, where I essentially just take my ring and I chain one, two, and we have two chains on our hook. We are going to place four single crochet inside of our ring. So one, two, three, Four. And one thing you'll notice about my crocheting is that I wrap from left to right. I don't wrap from right to left, which is the traditional way of doing it. I just learned left to right, and honestly, I have experimented with it the other way. And I find that my stitches with my amigurumi look a little bit more bubbly when I go from left to right, so I just go that way. You'll be fine either way. I also, you'll notice this round, I only go through the front loop of my amigurumi and not both loops. So that is also something that I do in order to make my amigurumi look a little bit more bubbly. I like how it looks, so that is why I do that that way. If you go through both loops, you're absolutely fine. Just do whatever you find is comfortable, um, whatever you like. These are just things that I do and that I like to do uh, for my amigurumi. So we are going to then work in the round. So we're gonna go across and back into our first stitch and we're going to single crochet one inside that one stitch and in the next stitch, we're going to put an increase. So we're gonna go back inside, we're gonna go inside our second stitch here, place one, not split our yarn, and then go back inside that same exact stitch, two. We're gonna do that one more time, and we're gonna be going from our four stitches up to six stitches. So one, and this is hard, because I tend to try to like push it so that it won't go in on itself. You want to kind of like make it so that those four stitches are on the outside and not on the inside out. Um, this is our last stitch so we're going to place an increase in that one. And now we have six stitches. I try to make sure that my work is staying the right side out and that is what's going to create that nice pointed tip is that there's so few stitches at the very beginning of our work. So now we have six stitches, we are on round three. We're gonna be going from six stitches to nine stitches during round three. So we're gonna do the exact same thing where we just single crochet one and increase the entire way around. We're essentially adding three stitches this next round. So this is an increase, wait a minute. Yeah, no, that's the increase round. It's hard to see when it's in black, but I really wanted to make a black cat, so there's that. So we're going to go inside our next stitch here, kind of slide in, and it will be difficult for the first like three rounds or so, pull my tail a little bit. because there are so few stitches and you're trying to work with very little. So if you get frustrated, just try to loosen up your grip a little bit and try to make it so your tension's not so tight, and that can help. And then one, and two. I believe that was the third increase. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At this point, I like to start using my tail as a stitch marker. So I'm going to just kind of put my hook through where I uh, had my last increases through. I'm gonna pull my tail right through that. Put my work back on. And now we are going to be increasing three stitches every single round until we get to 24 stitches. And the way that we do that is we're essentially creating one more single crochet between each increase as we go down. So the way that I do that is I'm going to now single crochet two and then increase because when I did my increase last round, I created an extra stitch between each increase, if that makes sense. So one, two, this is our second stitch. And now our third stitch, we're going to increase. So one, and back inside the same stitch, two. One, two, third stitch, and increase in that same third stitch. One, two, three, and increase. 
we went from nine stitches and now we are up to 12. I'm gonna move my tail into my next row. I try to go along uh, and move my tail along ever after every single one of these rows. So we're going to now single crochet three and increase. One, two, three, and then increase on the fourth stitch. One, two, three, increase on the fourth stitch. So there are two stitches inside that right there. One, two, three, and increase on the fourth stitch. We're going to move our tail. We are now at 15 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're at 15 stitches and now we're going to be going on around six and going from 15 to 18 stitches so we're going to then single crochet four and on the fifth stitch increase two three four five and increase that same stitch one two, three, four, five, and increase, one, two, three, four, and five, this is the last increase. We are now at 18 stitches. We are going to move our marker one more time and we are going to pull our tail a little bit more and now we're going to single crochet five and increase on the sixth stitch so one two three four five and then increase on the sixth stitch. Six and seven together. So there you go. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, to move along our marker and we are doing our last increase round now we are now on round eight and we are going to single crochet six and then increase we're going from 21 stitches to 24 stitches so one two three four five six and seventh stitch is now increased. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and increase. Next up, we're gonna be doing just single crocheting around from rounds nine and 10. So we're gonna go around for 48 stitches total, essentially. 
we're just gonna single crochet around not doing any more increasing that was our last increase round so we're just gonna keep going around and around and around and just well just around and around I guess if you count around as one row um, so we're just going to go around those two rounds and um, we're going to work on our inner ear after that after um, slip stitching off on this so essentially we're going to make the two black ears we're gonna sew them onto the head just wherever you really want them. I tend to make them uh, so that the centers of the ears line up with the eyes. If you can see here, the center of the ear kind of lines up diagonally with the eye. And I'll show you how I sew those on after I finish. I'm going to slip stitch off and just attach both of the ears. Be right back. All right, so I've gotten to the end. I'm going to put my hook inside of the first stitch of what would be round 11, and I'm going to just slip stitch off and cut a nice long tail, probably about 12 inches long for sewing, like so. We're gonna move this for right now because I'm actually not going to be using that right this second for a minute. I'm gonna pull this here, and what I like to do is take my tail like so and I like to then put my hook on the under part of that same stitch I'm gonna wrap my um, tail and just kind of pull it through I find that it makes it look a little bit smoother on the corner and it helps with sewing I'm also going to move out my tail my beginning tail that I made and I'm gonna cut it just to the length of the just like right underneath so that it won't unravel and it will stay inside the ear I'm now going to take my darning needle and I'm going to attach it to the top of the head. So I'm going to just kind of line it up here and see if I can get this to actually show. Got polyfill everywhere. So I'm going to line it up along here and I'm just going to put my darning needle inside of my work like so and I'm going to And I'm going to sew exactly like I did for my um, squishes. So if you have missed that, definitely go over to the Luna Squish uh, video to see how I do that. And I basically just go back and forth from the top of the stitch down all the way along. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back and show you how I do the center of the ear and how I attach that. Be right back. Okay, so now we have sewn on our ears and we are going to work on this little inner ear. I'm gonna pop up the pattern right here and generally it is a really easy pattern, but I am going to be doing a double increase to get the kind of triangular shape that I was looking for. So it's a little bit different than what I usually do. How do I get this out? There we go, there she is took me a second to figure out where it was and again my bowl is missing missing in action all right so we're going to make a little slip knot and we're going to put during round one just six single crochet on the inside we're going to create our magic ring one two and we're going to place six single crochet during round one on the inside so one two three, four, five, and six. Just want to double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull your tail. And now we're going to start working in the round for round two. We're going to single crochet one. So this first stitch gets only one single crochet inside of it. And then during the second stitch and there's a repetition times three we're going to do this two more times after this repetition um we're going to put two increases inside the single stitch so essentially we're going to take this stitch and place three single crochet while inside of it because usually you would only put one single crochet inside but because i want to kind of make it triangular and i want to turn a corner we're going to go back inside that stitch do an increase and then go back inside that exact same stitch and do another increase. So we're two increase, 
There you can see we've got one stitch, two stitch, three stitch inside that one stitch. So again, we're going to single crochet one. And then on the second stitch, we're going to put one, same stitch, two, same stitch, three. And we're going to do that one more time. We're doing a repetition of three times because essentially every time we do that increase, we're making it a little bit of a rounded corner. So we single crochet one, and then this is our last stitch. We're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to just slip stitch into the very first stitch of what would be round three. I like to do a quick little chain off. We're going to create a nice, decently long tail, and I'm going to pull that and pull it tight. I'm also going to do the same thing where I take my tail and I kind of pull it through the underside of the stitch just to kind of round off the, um, the little corner here. And what I like to do from here is I'm going to take my beginning tail and I'm going to snip it so that it's short, but not too short, but short enough that it'll hide behind it when it's on. So that's gonna be kind of snipped and just behind it. And what I do in order to attach this, you could just sew it on. But as many of you know, I use hot glue far more than I probably should. So what I do from here is I'm going to take my yarn. I'm gonna put my uh, tail on my darning needle and I'm going to stab the dead center of the ear where I want this to lay. So this is the dead center of the base of the ear. I'm gonna do that and I'm going to just kind of stab it through the rest of the work there and pull it so that it is, I don't need to pull it on. So then I'm just gonna pull it through the rest of it, not too, too tight and well, actually, yeah, pretty tight. That way this string will hide. And then I take hot glue and I just glue on these ears. So I will be back as soon as I hot glue these on and we are going to come back and I'm going to work on the mouth. All right. So I just take a little dab of hot glue, put it on the underside. That's why I cut this so short because it will be hot glued and I then just hot glue that there and then I pull these tight and I cut them off. It's kind of the same thing that I've done for a lot of my stuff for my amigurumis. So I'll be right back as soon as this is hot glued and then we'll start working on the mouth and I'll show you how I do the embroidery for the mouth before I attach it. Be right back. All right, so we are hot glued on and I'm going to take my little backs here and I'm going to, I'm bouncing everywhere. There we go. We're gonna take our tail and we're going to just kind of tug it like so. I like to take my tail, kind of pull on it, make sure that it's nice and firm and that it's not gonna come out. And then I cut that one and I try to add some tension when I'm cutting off my tails. That way it'll go back inside the fluff. And now we are going to work on the mouthpiece. I'm gonna take the darning needle out of his face because it makes me feel like I'm stabbing in my face. Even though I know he feels nothing, you know, but whatever. I'm going to create a slip knot, just like all my other pieces before. And I'm going to place six single crochet inside of a magic ring. So essentially I chain my two I now go inside and I do six single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we are going to increase every single one of those stitches up to 12. So first stitch, one, and two. Next stitch, not through both the stitches. There you go. One, I need more yarn. One and two. It's the second stitch. We're going to the third stitch. Increase. One, two. Fourth stitch. 
increase one two fifth stitch increase one and two and six stitch one and two so now we have 12 stitches on our work we're going to increase those 12 stitches to 18 and that is round three we are just finished up with round two we are now on round three so we're going to single crochet one and increase the entire time around so that we can go from 12 stitches to 18 stitches increasing six stitches that round so single crochet one and increase 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 And I believe this is our last one, so single crochet one and increase. This should be 18 stitches. Let me double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So here I like to move my tail as a marker and just kind of have it there so that I don't have to forget about it. And we are going to be going on to round four next. I'm going to pull some more yarn out. Try not to bounce my camera as best I can. And we are going to go from 18 stitches to 24 stitches. So we're increasing six stitches this round, just like every other round before. And we're going to single crochet two, one, two, and then increase on the third stitch, two inside that one stitch, all the way around. This is our last increase round, one, two, three increase one two three and increase one two three and increase one two nope not through both two and three do the increase on that one stitch and one two three and increase i pull my tail out a little bit there my working stitch. I'm going to pull my tail out, pull it through there, and for rounds five through seven, I am going to just single crochet around, as the pattern I posted up earlier says. So that is three rounds. I'm going to go around for all 24 of these stitches, and then I slip stitch off, and I'll show you how I embroider the nose before I attach it. It makes it significantly easier to just attach and embroider the nose before you attach it to your actual body part. So I'm going to go around for three rounds and then I'll be right back to show you how I embroider the nose. Be right back. All right, so now we have gone around three times. I'm going to do my slip stitch off just like I did before. Do a quick little chain. I'm going to create a nice decently long tail for when I have to sew this onto the body afterwards. I would much rather leave a way too long tail than a way too short tail. I'm going to do the same thing with the corner where I just kind of smooth it out by putting it underneath. Tug that out a little bit. I'm going to pull my main tail out and I'm going to actually snip that a little bit shorter so it's a little bit out of the way. And now I'm going to work on my, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. I'm going to work on my embroidery of the nose. I'm going to put him up here. He's just going to hang out. And the nose is going to look like this. And the way that I achieve this is essentially I take the pink yarn that I used on the ears and I make a, 
I, I like to have a good length of yarn, so like this is probably a good 36 inches of just pink. I'm gonna have him hanging out over here, and now I'm going to just kinda pull it so it's not even anymore. And what I like to do is my top right hand corner, this is gonna be like where I attach it to the face, but the face tippy top is gonna be right there. We're gonna go inside with our darning needle and go through the center of our six single crochet from the very beginning. That is our dead center. We're going to go through there and pull that through. I'm gonna leave a nice little length here for later and I'm just gonna go outward about three rows, go about there, and I'm gonna keep doing this over and over again. Go back in, go through the center again, go up, go over where it was right next to it and just keep going until the nose is the width that I want it. And I'm gonna just keep going. Go through the center. Try to make it so that they don't overlap too hard. Yeah. Go through the center. Well, that's not quite right. See, I didn't go far up enough, so I'm just gonna take my darning needle off. I'm gonna pull that back through. Take that out. So I'm not happy with how that looked, actually. I actually think I'm gonna cut the tail a little bit. I think I'm only gonna go with 24 inches because I'm having a hard time dealing with all of this yarn. Put the back on. So embroidery is not my forte. I just kind of keep doing it until it looks right, but essentially I'm gonna keep going back and forth. I'm gonna go up higher this time. And if I have to split between two stitches, I will. There we go. That looks better. Pull him down a little bit, go through the center again. Yeah, that looks better. Go through the stitch next to him, but maybe just slightly below. There we go. Keep going, and I typically do this enough times that like e. No, go in the center of the stitch. There we go. So that it, it's kind of a good thick size. I just generally like a bigger nose on my little cats. There we go. That looks better. That looks pretty good, actually. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm going to go through this side, I think, one more time. Just to generally through there again and I'm actually pretty happy with how that part looks right there but what I like to do next is I'll take this and I'll go back to the very rightmost and I'll go across to the leftmost and then I just kind of create this top cover of the nose if that makes sense and I'll do that twice if I feel like it's not covering enough And so I'm debating whether or not the, because I use the heather, whether or not this would look nice with that black line, or if I just try to maybe make it a pink line. Actually, I like it with the pink line. All right, so I'm going to go through the center again, and I'm going to go down adjacent from the nose, and then I'm just going to pick it up wherever I want the length to go to, and I'm going to do that and make a nice line right there. I'm actually not happy with that little space there, so I'm going to go through, make sure I'm going underneath where the line hit it, and kind of cover up there, and then that should be it. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. There we go. I am happy with that as a nose, and I'm going to pull that. And what I like to do with all of my embroidery <laughs> is I'm going to pull this a little bit, and I'm going to just knot it so that it's not super duper tight on the first one, and then the second one I'm gonna double knot it. That way it's just, it won't come out as easily as, you know, it might otherwise. 
So I actually like the little pink nose tip there, so I'm gonna go with that. If you don't like that, then you know, you can go with whatever you want. I'm gonna take these two and I'm going to just kind of snip them a little bit shorter, put all the tails in my tail bin, keep that on there, and I'm going to just kind of stuff this lightly and attach it with my normal sewing uh, technique. So I'm going to also show you how I do the tail and the tail is super duper easy so we will get to that and this little kitty cat will be done be right back after this is attached and then i will show you how to do the tail be right back go through the center well that's not quite right See, I didn't go far up enough, so I'm just gonna take my darning needle off. I'm gonna pull that back through. Take that out. So I'm not happy with how that looked, actually. I actually think I'm gonna cut the tail a little bit. I think I'm only gonna go with 24 inches because I'm having a hard time dealing with all of this yarn. Put the back on. So embroidery is not my forte. I just kind of keep doing it until it looks right, but essentially I'm gonna keep going back and forth. I'm gonna go up higher this time, and if I have to split between two stitches, I will. There we go. That looks better. Pull him down a little bit, go through the center again. Yeah, that looks better. Go through the stitch next to him, but maybe just slightly below. There we go. Keep going, and I typically do this enough times that like e. no go in the center of the stitch there we go so that it, it's kind of a good thick size i just generally like a bigger nose on my little cats there we go that looks better that looks pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm gonna go through this side, I think, one more time. Just to generally go through there again. And I'm actually pretty happy with how that part looks right there. But what I like to do next is I'll take this and I'll go back to the very rightmost and I'll go across to the leftmost. And then I just kind of create this top cover of the nose, if that makes sense. And I'll do that twice if I feel like it's not covering enough. There we go. And so I'm debating whether or not the, because I use the Heather, whether or not this would look nice with that black line, or if I just try to maybe make it a pink line. Actually, I like it with the pink line. All right, so I'm gonna go through the center again and I'm gonna go down adjacent from the nose and then I'm just gonna pick it up wherever I want the length to go to. And I'm gonna do that and make a nice line right there. I'm actually not happy with that little space there. So I'm gonna go through, make sure I'm going underneath where the line hit it and kind of cover up there. And then that should be it. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. There we go. I am happy with that as a nose. And I'm going to pull that. And what I like to do with all of my embroidery <laughs> is I'm going to pull this a little bit and I'm going to just knot it so that it's not super duper tight on the first one. And then the second one, I'm going to double knot it. That way it's just, it won't come out as easily as, you know, it might otherwise. So I actually like the little pink nose tip there, so I'm gonna go with that. If you don't like that, then you know you can go with whatever you want. I'm gonna take these two and I'm going to just kind of snip them a little bit shorter, put all the tails in my tail bin, keep that on there, and I'm going to just kind of stuff this lightly and attach it with my normal sewing uh, technique. So I'm going to also show you how I do the tail and the tail is super duper easy, so we will get to that, and this little kitty cat will be done. Be right back after this is attached, and then I will show you how to do the tail. Be right back. 
All right, so the nose is done, but I actually went back and I found this gray yarn that I liked better for the little mouth region. So I just attached that in the same spot as the pink uh, that was there. And I also doubled up on the layer. Instead of just doing one, I did two. So I'm actually pretty happy with how that looks. Um, one thing I will say is that if you want to add like something like whiskers, you can either use um, some more of the embroidery floss and just do a quick little embroidered whisker or I also would use some fabric paint which you could easily just kind of draw on some whiskers anything like that I just chose to go without whiskers on this one because well I just didn't like how it looked on the calico so I figured these two should match so I'm going to now work on the tail uh, that is the final thing for our little Emma Groomy guy. I'm going to post up the pattern right here as I get my yarn ready. And uh, it is a super easy, easy peasy little pattern. We're going to make our ring. We're going to place six single crochet inside of our ring. So we're going to do the chain two. And then we're going to place six single crochet on the inside. Oh no! I never do that. Oops. All right, let's flip that real quick. We're going to make our ring go one, two, and we're going to place six single crochet on the inside of our ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna kind of do the same thing where this is all wide open. We're gonna close that. But we're going to take our six and turn it up to nine. So we're going to essentially single crochet one and increase the next stitch because we want to increase three stitches uh, across our second row. So one and increase. One and increase. And now that we did our row two, we are going to just single crochet around for eight rounds. So rows three through 10, which is technically eight rounds of going around and around, we're going to just go around for nine stitches. I'm going to put our tail where our last increase was, and then I'm going to just slip stitch this off and attach it to the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get all eight of these done. So we're gonna go around for nine stitches for eight rounds. Be right back. All right, so we've gone around our for rows three through 10, and I'm going to leave a not crazy long tail about a long enough tail that I can sew this on. I'm going to pull and slip stitch off, make my tail go underneath like I've done for all of my other pieces before I sew. I'm also going to take my tail, instead of cutting it, because I feel like it's a little too close to where it started and I don't want things to unravel, I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to go inside right next to it. There we go. And try my hardest to pull that through. And it's split. Come on, bud. There we go. There we are. All right. That worked mostly. <laughs> and so now I'm going to cut my tail from the very beginning. So that's my beginning tail. Move that out of the way. I'm going to find my darning needle somewhere. There we go. Oh, well, also on a saddle hide. We're going to then just take our little guy's butt here. That'll work. Oh yeah, that's a good angle. And I'm going to just sew right along the back side. So I try to center it as much as I can. I think that's a good spot for the left. And I just go in and then I go up through the top. And essentially this is all there is to this cute little uh, Luna Squish cat. If you like stuff like this, then, you know, do the whole like, subscribe, do all the, the, the link things. And um, make sure that if you like this pattern that you download it with the free coupon code, which will be linked down below. Again, that will be free for the first week. 
and pretty much that's all there is to this pattern so i really uh like how this turned out he's super cute and if you guys are interested in uh, me showing you how to do the uh, color changes if i had enough people try to convince me i might show them how i did it on that one but again i like at my camera but again i'm not super comfortable with it so i'm not super happy with how my job is on that. I'm gonna get the fluff out of the way. Um, I'm going to be doing a sloth amigurumi, as I mentioned earlier in this video, very, very soon. Hopefully after the next couple of videos, I believe the next video is going to be a uh, review. So if you like stuff like this and just general knitting and yarn and crocheting kind of content, then, uh, you know, you know, stay tuned. Alright, until next time guys, bye!